Disney World is huge, and getting around is often easier said than done. So we're about to save you from being stranded at Magic Kingdom's gates at midnight with no idea where to go. Hey everybody, it's Chris for All Ears TV and AllEars.net. Today we're talking about ways to get around Disney World, and there are more options than you think. This list was compiled directly from you, AllEars.net readers and social media followers who have joined the conversation to help fellow viewers decide what's the best way to get around Disney World. First up, Disney transportation. Monorail, boat, bus, Skyliner, oh and I guess your own two feet. There are four free forms of Disney transportation right now, including Disney buses, the monorail, the Disney Skyliner, and a variety of water taxis available around Disney World. Whether you're staying in a Disney World hotel or not, you can rely on Disney transportation to get you around the parks. Notably, Disney transportation will typically drop you off at convenient places in close proximity to park and hotel entrances. But introverts may be unhappy that you have to sit with other Disney guests, and sometimes it can feel really packed. Disney transportation can be amazing, it can be a nightmare. You can get places quickly and for free, or it can take a really long time and be really frustrating. It just kind of depends on the day and the circumstances, but overall, it's a very valuable asset and resource that you have available to you when you are at Walt Disney World. Disney buses can transport you all over Disney World, including to and from the parks, hotels, and Disney Springs. After around 1.30 p.m., they also travel from park to park since park hopping begins at 2 p.m. Buses. I like the buses, but I also hate the buses. We have a love-hate relationship, me and the Disney buses. Um, I, I would assume I'm not alone in thinking that. Like, obviously they're an awesome amenity. Getting around without having to drive a car. Like, yeah, driving my car to the parks is faster, but you know what's not nice? Walking through Disney World parking lots. A lot of my job is walking through the parking lot at Disney World. They're nice buses. They've got Wi-Fi on a lot of them now. Some of them have USB ports in the seat. They move pretty quick. I mean, one comes every 20 minutes. That's pretty often. Also for me, like the buses are nostalgic. One of my favorite things about Disney World buses are when you're taking a bus to Magic Kingdom, when you go under the bridge that is the water bridge that the boats go over and from Bay Lake into uh, Seven Seas Lagoon. And while you're going under that bridge, a lot of the bus drivers will say like to kids, like, hold your breath, we're going underwater. And like, <sighs> to this day, to this day, I still hold my breath on when I go under that bridge, even when I'm by myself. True story, and I don't care if it's cheesy because it's one of my favorite Disney things. I used to really hate the bus when I would come on vacation uh, to Walt Disney World because it felt like I was wasting my precious Disney moments waiting for the bus, boarding the bus, sitting on the bus, getting to where I'm going. And um, I really kind of hated the bus. Now that I live here and I can have the luxury of taking my time going places, I really appreciate the bus. I appreciate that it takes me anywhere pretty much that I need to go in Walt Disney World um, in exchange for a little bit of my time. Back in my day, the Pop Century didn't have a Skyliner kids, so I took a bus to the theme parks. So I like the fact that they wrap them with different Disney characters, so then there's this fun of like, oh, what bus are we gonna get? Oh, it's a Toy Story bus. Oh man, I wanted the Aladdin bus. Like, I don't know, I just there's something simple and classic about a Disney bus and I like them. The monorail can't take you everywhere in Disney World, but it can take you to several hotels as well as to two different Disney parks. You can catch the monorail at the Transportation and Ticket Center just outside Magic Kingdom's park entrance and at Epcot. It also travels to Disney's Polynesian Resort, Disney's Grand Floridian Resort, and right through Disney's Contemporary Resort. Reader Mike M. prefers monorail. No comparison should be between all parks. I like the monorail. Um, I mean, it's iconic. It's, it's probably the most notoriously Disney thing on this list. Um, the monorail does have a smell. Does have a smell after a long day in Magic Kingdom. You know, you get packed in there pretty good and it, you know, smells like people. Um, but I, how can you not love the monorail? I especially love the monorail going over Epcot because you get to actually go through all of Epcot and you get a really pretty bird's eye view of the park. I'm not a 
big monorail person. I used to be. Like the monorail is very Disney and when I used to come to Disney World it was very core key for me to ride the monorail. But it's definitely not my favorite. In fact, it's probably my second least favorite above buses of transportation around Disney World. Um, just because it's usually crowded. Um, even at less busy times, the monorail can get crowded, um, especially the resort monorail. What a stylish way to get around Walt Disney World. It's as iconic of a mode of transportation as you will find in a Disney theme park. The fact that you get to drive it through the middle of a hotel, the contemporary resort, uh, that's just a, a, a spectacular effect. The Skyliner is the newest form of Disney transportation, and it connects Disney's Hollywood Studios and Epcot to multiple Disney World hotels. Value Hotels, Art of Animation, and Pop Century are connected by a Skyliner station that transports guests to the main Skyliner hub at Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort, where you can transfer to either Epcot or Hollywood Studios. You can also stop at Disney's Riviera Resort on the line heading to Epcot. Some people have cited fear of heights on the Skyliner, and if it stops, you're just kind of stuck. Plus, there was the whole crashing thing that happened, but it really hasn't happened in a while. Knock on wood. The Skyliner also closes during stormy weather, so it's not always guaranteed to be available, and there are times you might have to sit with strangers. Think sitting with people on a bus or monorail is awkward? Try sitting with them in a box floating, you know, across the sky. We asked our readers what their favorite form of transportation is, and Jesse M. said, The Skyliner. The breeze when we're moving was nice. It was a peaceful ride, and I loved the views. Several readers also expressed wishes that the Skyliner be extended. Tony R. said, Skyliner for the win in my book. Hope they extend it someday. And Eric M. said, Skyliner needs added lines to the other parks. It's a great way to get around. I love the Skyliner. Do I love all transportation? I might. I love the Skyliner. I think it's so fun. It's a ride in of itself. I've stayed at Art of Animation with my girlfriends for Food and Wine weekend. It was so easy and convenient to go to Food and Wine and not worry about who was driving. And it's a little more fun than taking a bus or anything else. Um, I love, you know, figuring out which gondola you're gonna get. And surprise, it turns out we all thought you'd want the different character ones, but it turns out you want the plain ones because you get the best view. Yeah, I'm Team Skyliner. And I thought I would hate it because it was so ugly, but now I like it. It's got like ride vibes. Like you feel like you're on a ride. There's good views. It's like cool in there. The lady comes on and interrupts every conversation you're having by saying, you are on the Disney World Skyliner. Now you're soaring over Caribbean Beach Resort. And if you're ever watching one of my videos and I'm just talking over her, that's because I am fed up secretly a behind the scenes fact. The big problem with the Skyliner is like, why? It's like, it's down all the time. They have to stop it if there's lightning or heavy wind. And I don't know if you know this, but this is Florida. There's lightning all the time. It's like a blue sky outside. Give it 47 seconds and I bet you it could be lightning. Like there's so much lightning. So it's down all the time. And so like that feels a little like maybe it wasn't the best decision. First time I got loaded in with a full gondola of people, it was unbelievably uncomfortable, okay? I was with two couples and me. We were all facing each other, knee to knee, in that Skyliner, up in the air, no air conditioning, in the heat, and we did not know what to say to each other. It wasn't a great ride. But I will say this, it's a beautiful ride, and I appreciate that about the Skyliner. And finally, travel by water is also available throughout Disney World, such as from Hollywood Studios to Epcot, or from the Transportation and Ticket Center to Magic Kingdom. There's also travel by boat from certain Disney hotels to other locations. Boat travel can sometimes take a while, though they can be convenient and relaxing too. I love the friendship boats on Crescent Lake. I think that's such a fun ride, especially if you're lucky enough to get one of the seats in the very back of the boat that's actually outside. Um, and I love that it starts at Epcot and ends up at Hollywood Studios or vice versa, and that you stop at Yacht and Beach, Boardwalk, Swan and Dolphin. You get this like cool tour of that resort area and you go from one iconic park to another. It's just a really cool ride. Just so you're all aware, in the script, it just says Quincy, colon, give us a boat rant. You asked and I'm answering. I said, I relate to boats 
And I don't remember saying that or why I said it, but I said it. It's on camera. And so then everyone was like, what does that mean, Quincy? And I was like, I don't know what it means. I just said it. I don't always know what's coming out of my mouth. Um, actually, I would say most of the time I don't know what's coming out of my mouth. Boats! They're the best. They're literally the best transportation in Disney World. Are they the fastest? No. Who cares? You do. And that's fine. Like, you can take the faster transportation. I get it. Like, you got stuff to do. But, um, if you are not go, go, go in Disney World all the time, I recommend penciling in the extra couple moments it takes to take a boat. And, and, hear me out, hear me out, especially for Magic Kingdom, hear me out. Who doesn't like riding a ferry boat? There are seats, there are always seats available. Even at the very busiest of times, you can typically find a seat if you need one, and on the ferry boat, on the top floor. Also, there's a breeze, it's super nice, you're out on the water, who doesn't love being on a boat? And, there is nothing better in the world than getting yourself a Joffrey's coffee at the TTC and drinking it, sipping it on the ferry boat while you listen to Disney tunes and cross the lagoon to get to Magic Kingdom. It's like a couple of extra minutes and then you don't have to worry about like carrying your coffee once you get to the park if you took it on the monorail or getting your coffee in the park, which we all know takes like twice as long as it takes to get on the ferry boat because have you seen those Starbucks lines? Even the Joffrey's lines in the morning at Magic Kingdom. Drink your coffee on the ferry boat. Get on the boats. You'll have a nice time. It's nicer. It feels like you're on vacation. There's always very sweet cast members driving the boats. I've had amazing interactions with the boat cast members. Get on the boats. The pros. Disney transportation is free and it's convenient. And there are multiple options to choose from. The cons. Disney transportation methods fill up fast, especially at closing time when it can take a lot longer than you expect. Plus, you often have to sit with strangers, sometimes in very close quarters. Next up, driving your own car. Driving can let you travel more independently and on your own terms, but it's not without flaws. Whether you're renting a car or driving your own, you can sit in your own private car and travel wherever you choose to go. And you don't have to wait on Disney transportation or be limited to where it can take you. Plus, you can leave whenever you want. Need to make a store run? A car can come in handy. As reader Kerry D said, a rental car saves so much time and allows an initial trip to Walmart. There, it can get really confusing if you don't know where you're going. There are tons of road signs, but still to not, if you don't know where you're going exactly, it can get really confusing. Uh, they also, Disney directs you not the fastest way. They direct cars certain ways for um, traffic flow. So your GPS might tell you something completely different than the signs and that really confuses people too. I'm against driving in Disney World because I have to do it a lot because I live here and it makes no sense for me to do anything other than driving. And I'm not a big fan of it. Um, like if you're, for one, rental car prices are like crazy, wild. They're just out the, ooh, they're in the stratosphere. And then also you have to keep in mind that like you're paying for parking unless you have an annual pass or you're staying at a resort. And if you are staying at a resort, you're paying for parking overnight at that resort. So you're paying for parking, you're paying for a rental car. It doesn't feel good when the transportation at Disney is free and you could just pay for like airport transportation, a one-time fee, and then not worry about it. Like the benefits of a rental car are obviously that you can go off property if you want. If you're going to Universal, it's nice to have one. You should watch our transportation race from Disney to Universal to learn more about how you can get over there. I personally hate, 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 strong word, but I hate it, walking back to my car at the end of a Disney day. I would rather walk the shorter distance, it's always shorter, to the bus stop and then sit on an air conditioned bus that I don't have to drive because I can't drive a bus. Also, literally just this morning I was at Epcot and they weren't parking in the close area, I don't know why, but they were parking in like the very, very, very farthest place you could park despite the fact that I got there early. Moral of the story, you don't wanna walk through a parking lot. No, no. I may be being dramatic, and maybe this isn't such a big deal to you, and maybe you are going Universal or you like to eat at the Olive Garden on the third night of your Disney trip, and I respect you if that's what you want to do. Parking costs $25 per park if you don't have an annual pass or Disney Vacation Club, which means you could be paying $50 or more if you want to park hop. Also, driving in an unfamiliar area can be difficult. And Disney parking lots are huge. And without trams running in all the parking lots, you might have a long walk to the entrance gates. And losing your car is a possibility, though cast members can't help. Molly's chronically bad at finding her vehicle in a parking lot. It is, it is, it's really something to behold. Pro tip, take a picture of your row. 
Now, if you're planning to drink alcohol, this isn't an ideal option. Still, reader Larry J said, my own car. I don't want to waste time waiting on some other method. If I'm on vacation, I don't want to be driving around. Driving is not fun. Driving is not vacation. You know, you're going to Epcot, you're going to Animal Kingdom, you're having a few cocktails. Nobody wants to deal with having to like figure out who's driving and nobody wants to be the DD. I don't like to drive my car at Disney World. I often will Uber from my house, even when I have access to my car, because it's easier. That is not an economical solution, by the way. Although with gas prices, maybe it is, honestly. The pros. Driving your car gives you more independence over your plans. There's no waiting for your own car, and a private car means you don't have to sit with strangers. The cons? Parking lot fees can add up fast, especially if you plan to park hop. Driving in an unfamiliar area might be stressful, and those giant parking lots make it easy to lose your car. After you get the results at the end of this video, be sure to head over to allears.net to leave your reviews for everything Disney Parks related. Hotels, restaurants, rides, pretty much anything that you've experienced on your Disney and Universal vacations. Your opinion is what makes allears.net the go-to website for Disney fans and trip planners around the world. Be sure to check out the site right after we talk about ride sharing. Rideshare gives you a similar sense of independence in driving your car, but it costs money for each ride. That said, you do avoid parking fees and paying for gas, so the price might even out with driving. Rideshares are good. I mean, in this, I, I take rideshare now as a local that lives here. I will take rideshare sometimes with my friends if we know we're going to be imbibing at Food and Wine Festival or uh, something else, you know, safety first. So I don't mind rideshare. I definitely don't have as much experience with it as Breedlove or Quincy because um, Breedlove doesn't have a driver's license. So he literally rideshares everywhere for his entire life. My tip for driving in Walt Disney World, don't drive in Walt Disney World. You're talking to a guy who's never had a driver's license, and let me tell you something, I have a much easier life than a lot of my friends and coworkers. When I am with a friend who has their car and we have to walk back to the parking lot to get in their car so they can drive me home, I'm like, no, 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 friends, thank you so much for offering, I'm gonna go ahead and get my rideshare back because my rideshare car picks me up very close to, <laughs> to the entrance of the park and I am not walking out into the dark for a mile after walking around Disney World all day to find your car just so you can give me a free ride home. I know that sounds very ungrateful, but friends with cars who are parking in Walt Disney World, why? Leave your car at home, leave your car at the resort, and take Disney transportation or ride share. It is absolutely worth all of the money. So I actually use ride share a lot because I share my car. Um, so I use ride share pretty regularly in, when I go to Disney World. Um, and a lot of times like it's just easier for me to ride share, especially if I have a resort stay and I'm gonna be like heading to the resort and then leaving from like Animal Kingdom the next day. I don't have to worry about getting my car when I'm gonna be showing you guys transportation. Um, and I don't live too, too far, so ride shares tend to be not too expensive for me. If you ever forget something, if you're not feeling good, just get a ride share back to your hotel. Even if you don't get a ride share, the bus typically takes like, say a bus will take 10, 15 minutes to drive somewhere, a ride share, even with waiting for it, it's probably gonna take six or seven around Disney World. It's just faster. And if I'm gonna be waiting in Disney World, I wanna be waiting for rides, not for Disney World transportation. Most Disney parks have ride share stops near the front entrances of the park, so you're typically dropped off in a convenient spot. And perhaps the biggest benefit is that you can travel when and where you want to go as long as cars are available. And you don't have to drive, which means you can drink around the world without issues. Another big thing about ride share is there will always be a wait around park close. Typically, I don't wait that long any other time, but after fireworks or right at park close, you can wait a while. I've waited 40 minutes before for a ride share car. And in those moments, I'm like, boy, do I wish I was on Disney transportation or taking my own car. Because Disney is able to dispatch more buses to the park that is closing at that time. Ride share, there's only a certain number of drivers driving at a certain time and Disney has no control of that and it's not dictated at all by when the park closes. So you are gonna end up with surge pricing a lot of the times and also a long wait. My big tip for that is that both Lyft and Uber have a priority option that only pops up sometimes. It only pops up if 
it's very, very busy and there's sort of like room for the priority option. If you see it, I recommend booking it because oftentimes it saved me 20 minutes plus and the like two or three dollars extra that it costs is 20, 20 of my minutes is worth that to me. I ride share everywhere, every day of my life. And the best tip that I can give you between the two major rideshare apps, Uber and Lyft, I will always have both downloaded on my phone and I will enter the address, my destination address into both when I'm ready to leave and see which one is faster slash cheaper. And I will pick the one that's obviously better in that moment. And it really is split pretty evenly between the two, so I can't, recommend one over the other. I would just recommend that you have both with you when you're here in Walt Disney World because one will be giving, you know, a very high price with surge pricing and the other won't have surged yet or for whatever reasons they have more drivers on the road in my area at that time and will have a much better price. So definitely play the two apps against each other and Give yourself enough time. You don't want to end up in an emergency situation trying to get to a dining reservation or um, a return time for a, a virtual queue um, and have a driver cancel on you because that does happen to me a lot where a driver will cancel and leave me kind of stranded. But once again, if a, a, a driver is canceling on you on one app, you can always try the other app and vice versa. Having both apps ready to go allows you to have sort of twice the chance of getting a timely ride and a much better chance of getting a more affordable ride. Minivans are returning, which are a combination of Disney transportation and ride sharing. These vans are operated through Lyft, so you can book them through their app and they're usually good about transporting families with kids too. Pros, you can order a car whenever you want. Ride sharing gives you more independence without having to be the driver, and there are convenient drop-off locations at each park. The cons, you have to pay for it, and prices can surge at times. Plus, there are times you still have to wait, especially during busy times like after fireworks. Okay, before we reveal the best way to get around Disney World, give us a like, click that thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video. If you really want to be part of the fun, be sure to follow us on social media at All Ears Net. Got it? Good? On we go. The winner of this transportation debate, according to All Ears readers, is the Skyliner. Its convenience, quick travel, and access to two parks and multiple Disney hotels make it the favorite for most of our readers. Let us know how you like to travel in the comments. This is Chris for AllEars.net. See you next time. <laughs>